Hello everyone, Darren here, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Now, in the last episode, I finalized the build for my Crystal Oscillator Factory that we've been doing for the last few episodes. We all powered it on, and then it now produces 60 Crystal Oscillators per minute, and this was needed, so we could start automating radio control units, which is needed for the next active milestone. So, you may remember that radio control units also required aluminum casing, which is something I built a huge factory for just before this one which is producing about 1,500 casing per minute, as well as 500 aluminum alclad sheets. Now, it still needs some additional raw materials to get fully up to that number, but it's like 85% of the way there. So, long story short, automating something like radio control units has been a very long time in the making. Now, I've also just recently streamed this world for the first time, as I wanted to do some of the cosmetics for the factory, chat with you guys, and just run through some additional ideas, and it went pretty well. I'll definitely be doing it again but I did have a complete breakdown of my train logistics, which has taught me quite a lot. I could spend quite a long time breaking it all down, but maybe throughout the episode I'll explain it here or there, uh, especially when I'm focusing on trains again. Anyway, it's going to require rethinking some of the stations and junctions that I'm going to be building in the future, but for now, it's just back and working, and it should be fine for quite some time, but technically it won't be fine forever, and I'll explain that later. Anyways, let's take... A quick look around at what's changed since the previous episode, and then just start working our way through the to-do to list Excuse me, on the right-hand side of the screen. So, today we're going to be placing the final manufacturers for the radio control units, doing the logistics room so we can divide up everything that comes from the train stations. I'm then going to be heading down to my circuit city, which is where we make computers, and kind of hooking up the exports to the train line. And I'll be doing the same with the aluminum factory as well. And then we should be able to tick off the milestone. There's only six manufacturers needed for this, so it shouldn't take too long. Anyways, you find me out here. Uh, I was going to say kind of midday, but it's actually coming up to the evening. So this is basically what's changed. All right, so there it is. So I basically put the outer shell on the factory since you would have last seen it. Now, the internal organs of the factory, the logistics of everything is pretty much set in stone. It hasn't changed or anything like that. So if you were following along, it's the same amount of machines in the same places. It's just how I dressed it up around it with concrete pillars and such. So we'll just run up to it and get a bit of a better look at it. I've also changed this kind of walkway bridge. If you remember, it has a conveyor belt running underneath it with also a power line running underneath it. it looks great. I'm really happy with it. It used to go to about there, and now I've just kind of moved it over a little bit. So it's um, kind of attached to the factory itself rather than running in front of part of it, if that makes sense. And then we've also got the actual stairs that lead in here. I'm just going with double gates, open gates for this, because there's like four stairways leading up, and of course there's no real door that can handle four stairways. You could do the automated gates, but I prefer to have the automated gates on the road that we have going down below. So the truck that's delivering in the Caterium Ore comes in here, and it hits into the truck station. Super happy with how this has turned out. I think it looks quite good. I got this idea here for the bit of kind of the, I don't even know what you want to call it, sort of a grate for the water to kind of feed through. Got that idea from a YouTuber called Fluxo, so if you want to go check out his, he does amazing builds and he does tutorials on how to build cosmetically and how to build nice. Um, so definitely go check him out, Fluxo, I believe is his channel name, quite a small channel, underrated in my opinion, definitely deserves more subscribers, more views, especially if you like the beauty building aspects of the game. Um, this one's a Darren original, though, <laughs> at least how I've built the uh, truck stations into the walls and then used these sort of, what are they called, half-pipe pillars or something? They're called the quarter outer corner extensions, and then you got the outer corner quarter pipes, yeah. So, they look pretty good. They've been kind of blending everything in quite nicely, I feel like, so I'm quite happy with how that's going. And then we have our truck, obviously, just picking stuff up. So, this system here... One truck is attached to this truck station, and then two deposits are where it's collecting from. It's actually collecting from one truck station, but it's collecting from two different miners, which is kind of what it's supposed to let me know. Anyway, over here it says that we're getting 480 Caterium ore per minute coming into bay number one, and that's the idea with that. All right, so lots of this factory is still unfinished. I would say this is unfinished, right? The constructor floor here on the bottom that's taking in the Caterium ore and turning it into quickwire. Unfinished, needs to be mended and kind of attached together onto this side. Kind of need to link everything up together in a nice little bow. And then of course we have our uh, water extractor basement level. So I'll just show you, I don't want to spend too long going through everything, but these sort of walkways, I've got one completed over on the other side. So we'll just make our way down to that really quickly. And I can show you the sort of layout that I've gone for for the different floors. So this is one of our stairwells. 
Nice, the power is on. I thought it said it wasn't there for a second. So this is our basement floor, right? The basement floor is basically where I'm handling all of the... Oh, sun must be setting, actually. All of the water extraction and things of that nature. Obviously, the logistics for the trucks and stuff like that. Now, this will take us straight up to the very, very top floor, but we'll just walk up for now to the next floor over, which is going to be floor one, and that's going to be refinement. So I decided to put the number on the actual sign and then the name of the floor that we're in. So number one, floor one, refinement, floor one, refinement. This is all where all of our refineries are. And then as we go further, now we can go up to floor five or we can go up to floor three, manufacturing one or manufacturing two. So each floor has its logistical floor underneath. We also have a ventilation floor, which is really just like a hiding the chimney stacks and then having a little vent that leads it out. Might make it look nice in future, but it's obviously something that we'll never really ever see again. <laughs> uh, then we've got manufacturing logistics once. So this is the logistics floor below the first manufacturing floor. So all the logistics handled here are purely just for the manufacturing. So we'll just run back upstairs again. And then here we are at manufacturing one. Of course, we have all our manufacturers and we have these lights are totally temporary. I was just testing out what blue lights kind of look like. And we have these nice big concrete window pillars and uh, window sills that people were saying that they were really digging. So I decided to go with that and lose the metal. Just stay with the concrete. It's what I know best. And then we have this sort of electric blue on the manufacturers themselves. And that's the kind of idea I have for the lighting. Some sort of like electric blue lighting, if you know what I mean. I'm going to keep this open. Initially, this is going to be a walled off room, but I actually just like the look of it being an open floor. I mean, there's nothing else on this floor, so it might as well be a room in and of itself, if that makes sense. Anyway, we can work our way back up the stairwell. This will take us to the very top floor. That's the logistics for the next one over and then up to floor five. And here we are at manufacturing two where we've got the open night sky at the moment. The top pillars. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do the roof, that sort of thing. Also, if we can maybe just get some distance on this, we can see the different layers to the place. So because of the way the refineries jut out on different angles, it makes things quite uneven. But that can kind of make it have a bit more personality, make it look kind of unique. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like ultimately what it looks like. Obviously, if we get some more distance in the future, we can jump out and see what it looks like from afar. But that's pretty much it for the tour. Um, oh, well, I got one other thing I suppose I could show very quickly. Is that if we run... And obviously the wires and all that's just temporary. I'm just trying to power the, keep the place powered on until I can figure out where to hide those wires. Um, so yeah, if we looked out... Mm, I guess it doesn't really matter, but I was going to say there's like little windows on the logistical floors to let light in during the day. It's obviously nighttime now, so we can't see too much. Now, I'm having train problems, as I mentioned. I won't bore you to death with it, but these trains are probably completely going to change in the future, but we got to work with them for now. I haven't yet fully figured out how I'm going to do it, but I've come to the conclusion that if we're going to build a rail network, of which I've obviously got a, a very large one, or a relatively large one, need to set some rules for it you know what's the max length the train can ever be and what's the how many trains and how do we fit them into stations and what's the distance of stations between each other that's how we can kind of judge all of our junctions and things like that i never did that it's been different for every factory and that's the thing that's causing the problems um because what works for one factory doesn't necessarily work for the others anyway this is where we send all of our materials forward i changed the belt speeds to be the correct speed for whatever is coming in or going out. I think we're sending in 60 AI limiters per minute, so that's just going in nicely. We're actually backed up for crystal oscillators right now, so let's just hop down here and maybe I can hook up a temporary awesome sink. And we can just sink away the crystal oscillators that we don't need right now and let the place get flowing again. If I just grab a little bit of power from up here. There we go. All right. Now, I might just wait a few minutes and let the daytime come back on, and then we can just resume. Alrighty, so the sun is actually rising, and it's kind of brightened up the area now so we can see what we're working with. So effectively, I've gone with a foundation and a half gap for our walkway in terms of the coated concrete. That's sort of where we plan to walk, and then our asphalt is our sort of workspace for where the manufacturers are going to go. Now, I don't know how deep it in it goes. We don't need to go that far. I'm only going to have six machines, so it's three in a row. And then another three facing it. So that's the plan. So I'm just going to go with a lookout tower. Now I forgot to say, I'm actually using the recipe, the standard recipe. The alternate recipe I have for many, uh, radio control units uses circuit boards. Whereas the standard recipe just uses computers. Um, so the alternate recipe uses circuit boards and rubber. Now we obviously bring rubber into this factory, so it was kind of lining up perfect. But unfortunately, I just don't quite make enough circuit boards yet. And all my circuit boards go into making computers. So I'm just going to send the computers here and use the standard recipe. 
So if we click radio control unit, standard recipe is this. 40 per minute aluminum casing, 1.25 crystal oscillators, which obviously we make here, 1.25 computers, which we make here, and we get two and a half radio control units out. Now in future, this would be an easy enough change that if I ever make more circuit boards, we could just deliver the circuit boards here instead of the computers, and everything else would pretty much have to stay the same, and we could boost this place. Um, to make more so it's fairly flexible that way because we have pretty much the materials here I just don't have quite enough circuit boards Something else I'm planning on doing in the future is tearing down circuit city and rebuilding it But we'll talk about that later and why all right, so up here. We are we can now place these Manufacturers now I copied the blueprints I had before For the manufacturers for crystal oscillators you would have seen in the previous episode And I've just basically copied that and changed the recipe so that now it's making manufacturers because I want basically the same style and the same look to the place. It's on the same floor as the other manufacturers. But what we got to do, as we've done before, is just chop away a bit of the flooring. Something like that. Chop away the underfloor. And then work with the bottom bit and see how far over we can go. In fact, I'm going to chop this bit away as well. And this. So, in order to do this, we need to grab, not the wall, the actual foundation from here. Drag it out. So that's where we're going to look to actually play something. And that'll just be temporary for the first one. Once the first one's down, as I always say, it gets really easy after that. Okay, so blueprints. We want our manufacturer. And I basically want to push it, yeah, kind of over the edge, actually, for the floor holes, if you see them on the left. So they're over the edge of the thing. I actually do want to do that this time. Last time I didn't do that, and it wasn't quite lined up where I wanted it to be. So one, two, three... Four? Let's try four. <laughs> I think, oops. Well, good job, Darren. I misclicked. Uh, four. I think that's still four. Yeah, let's do four. So I'm saying four from this side. All right, so the first one's down. I made a little bit of a mistake with spacing. I pushed it out just one extra further than I should have. So hopefully this is right. This should give me the space that I need. Um, I think it needs to be, yeah, so one, two, three, four. Four like that, away from the edge. And that should even things out for me. And this needs to be half over the line. Okay. So I just, I actually built all six out and then just removed them because it was just slightly off. I mean, it really doesn't matter, but it does, <laughs> you know? Um, because for this area especially, I'm not tight for space, so it, it wouldn't really affect anything. But it just wasn't quite, like, symmetrical, so I just wanted to fix that. Uh, this should do it, though. All right, so just get rid of the underfloor. It's done a great job for me. You have fulfilled your purpose. All right, so we'll fly back up. We have our manufacturer in place. We'll just go back to the blueprints, go down to here, activate blueprint mode, rotate around. That's our second one. That's our... Oh, dear God. And that's our third one. No problem at all. <laughs> All right, looking good. So now we can just get our next uh, three in the front. So we'll start from this, this side, I guess. Okay, so if we were to judge the spacing now, if we have a look, there's the line. So one, two, three, four. That's good. One, two, three, four. So yeah, spacing has worked out now nicely. It's not going to be the same from the front to back, so this one is just behind the line here, whereas this one is on the line. But I'm okay with that. It's okay. Um, I knew about that before it happened, so it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, right, so we'll just leave it at that. That's pretty good. Pretty happy with that. So that's the six that we need. So now we can actually change the material back, or even chop away some of this room if we wanted to. Don't need anything from beyond this point. Uh, so even just for now, I'll just paint a concrete to know that it can go. If I wanted it to, because it'll depend on how I do the logistics downstairs. I'm not sure if this is even needed or not. Could be needed in future, I suppose, if you want to expand this place out. That's true enough. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, we just have our googly eyes looking at us, as some in the comments pointed out before. But that's going to be machines. So we have 32 man manufacturers, so now we've got 38. I'll just get rid of some of these. Uh, little spacing blocks. The highlighted? Yeah, it is. Alrighty, there we go. 
Crystal oscillator, so 32 aluminum casing, oscillator, and computer. So now what we're going to do is just head downstairs, do what we did last time. Uh, well, I've actually walled that off, so that's going to make it pretty tricky. We've got to actually take the stairs and um, do the splitter configurations just underneath. So if I remember correctly, it should just be a little bit of simple spacing. So we're just doing the exact same that's underneath here, but underneath this place. So it's going to be a lot less intense because there's a lot less to work with. But the idea was in my blueprint panel again, in the logistics section, we have a splitter config 2. I need to really rename this. The idea would be it would sit somewhere in front like here and come towards me. And it has to step over three. So one, two, three, four actually, I think. And then I think I need to just wait for a green line to appear and I should have it lined up. Like here, I think. So let's try that. If not, I can correct this myself, but that looks about right. Yep, it's only got three inputs this place, so if I ended up doing the different recipe, it would need four inputs, which would make things a little bit more tricky, because it would mean that this is just about like... Well, I guess it's actually not clipping. But the output thing would look a bit confusing, but we'll talk about that later. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. We're using three for now, so it's totally fine. All right, so uh, let's do just as a test to make sure this works. Go like this, go like this, and go like this. I'll just use Mark V the whole way, and then I'll just replace them with the correct belt when I need to. So that worked out nice and easy. First first attempt as well, which is good. Um, splitter config 2. We'll just line ourselves up here. Again, the line is on the line, actually, which is interesting. Turn off blueprint mode. Hmm. A little hard to see, actually, why that's the way it's lining up. This is the way it's supposed to go, yeah? Okay, cool. So then we get a green line on the right, so there's one there. And the green line here. So that should be all three. Hopefully, yep, lined up, good. All right, so we'll just connect the belts up super quick. Ah, so I just realized something. The direction of these belts are going away from the center here, which was fine for this place, but these um, machines up here are actually going to be taking stuff from over there, so we don't need them to be facing that direction. They should really face the other direction. Uh, so in that regards, I think I might just reverse it. So can I do that okay? It would be going like this, and then off to the left. Yeah, so just to, as an example on this line, do it more correctly this way. So one, two, three, and four, and then it has to come down and line up. Which I think is there. Yeah. So I've basically done it both ways now. So I'm just going to go like this. One, two, three, four. Pull this down until it makes sense to about there. Do that again. Right. Yeah, it just makes a bit more sense because we're going to be feeding in the materials from over this direction. So I'm going to have to remove this and just redo it. But I won't bother wasting your time with that. All right, so there we go. So we have both lines of splitter configurations in place. We just need to now drop down the actual... Inputs for the manufacturers, no problemo. Should be nice and quick. Doing only six is quite nice compared to the 32 last time. And it was on multiple floors, which made it tricky. And then, like I said, I'll just change these belt speeds to match what they should be. Not that you need to do that. I like to just do that. It kind of helps the manifold in some ways. Um, but it also just makes the belts look nicer when there's supposed to be 60 on the belt and you see just a belt of 60, you know? It's kind of nice. All right, there we go. So that's them all hooked up. So we're going to have to start pulling materials in from over that way. So I'll just mark off that I've placed the manufacturers now. That's in place. The logistics room is the next thing that we're doing. So the manufacturer's place. We need to also do their outputs. We'll just do the input first. It's kind of more important anyway. Right, so... That's where we have the old traditional inputs. So I'm going to get rid of this old walkway. It's not going to be used. So I'll just get rid of this. Okay, cool. Love to see it. There's our oscillators on their way out. The limiters on the way in. Looking good. All right, so... This is logistics room down here. So this place will need to expand out by one, I think. Yeah, I think so. All 
All right, so we'll just expand out the next floor. Sorry, there was just an auto save there, but that's pretty much done now. So this logistics floor is coming up by one more, and then this one can come up by one more. And then basically the one above that goes up by one more. Uh, what actually, we could do this one first. So the floor holes are going to be here. One, two, three, and four. That's three inputs, one output. So if we do end up adding a fourth line, we'll have to just squeeze in between one of these. Maybe dead in center or something in the future. Uh, okay. So we'll just drag this out this way. Same again. One, two, three, and four. Oh, I did it too far over, actually. Looking good. Uh, so, oh my god. My hover pack didn't carry me the whole way. So yeah, we'll just uh, make sure that these are... Connected correctly. Alright, so those connections are safe. Uh, so this is going to have to go all the way up to this floor here. <laughs> so it's pretty far over. So it needs to come over by five. Alright, we can brighten it up just to see what we're working with. But at least we know that it just has to go into the center anyway, so not a big deal. One, dos, a tree, cuatro. <laughs> All right, there we go. So that'll just continue to go up. Just realized, actually, the one that's supposed to be the output probably isn't assigned to be the output right now, so I'll have to fix that. Yeah, it's this one. This needs to be reversed, but it won't let me because I've already hooked this bit up. At least I caught it before it got too bad. Um, so yeah, it's coming in. It's coming in that way. Good. Yeah. All right, that'll be radio control units out. All right, this is where they'll come down and basically feed out to the logistics room. All right, looking good. So, the situation is this. This is our little extra logistics room, right? We send things up to the actual factory floors. This is our logistics room that comes down from the train station, but I, I like the pathway to go through both. Delete this now. Let the oscillators start building back up. Should be one per second, really, as they make their way in. Um, so, this is going to be kind of have to be a little mini bit temporary <laughs> um, in terms of its niceness and its layout. I'll try to make it look relatively nice, but I want the belts to be together. So, we'll just put down perhaps the poles. So, do we put them here? Is it? I think so. Not sure if they're supposed to go that close together, but hopefully. Uh, so, as an example, this will be just coming over this way, and does it connect in? It's actually slightly too long. Alright, and that's that one hooked up. So, first belt is hooked up, and we just have to do the same over and over again until we get them all fed. They can be quite hungry. So, let's say this here, one, two... And just feed that one. Bring this back. So they're going to be fed through the underground, or the floor. Yeah, well, underfloors. And this one is the last one. So just to do it, keep it consistent. Start here. One, two. Bring that over. Bring that in. Bring that back. All good. All right, and then this is the out belt. Uh, so the amount out we're getting is definitely going to be less than 60 per minute. So again, just to keep it consistent, consistent, we'll just bring this over this way. One, two. And just drag this to some other box that's going to be up here just temporarily, I guess. Okay, so a little messy on that last one, but that'll be tucked away neatly when I figure out where it's going to go. But the important thing is this bit, which will stay there. Um, so we got to feed these three lines with their respective goods. 
So just have a look at what kind of numbers I'm dealing with. I didn't write this one down in Excel or anything. So we've got six. I'm using this recipe. So let me just break out. Oh, I don't need to break out any calculator, I guess. So 40 per minute times six. So 40 times six. That's going to be 240 casing. So I'll just write that down and circle it. So it's 240 casing is going to be traveling along one belt. Um, the next one then over is going to be the oscillators, 1.25 and 1.25, both for computers. So 1.25 times 6. So 7.5 computers per minute, and then it's going to be 7.5 oscillators per minute as well. So for, to be honest, most of these belts can just be level 1 belts, right? Now, I'll do that later, I guess. It can get bogged down with that. The important thing now is handling what comes out of the train stations. So let's just fly up to this little mini platform, which might end up getting removed in future. <laughs> um, but just bring it out this way. So the train stations, since my stream, the train stations moved back. That's actually the only thing that did change logistically, thinking about it. I moved the trains further out um, because they were just a bit too close to the edge. So you're going to need to go and you'll need to go. And so will that and that. All right. So on this side of things, it's looking fairly neat. And obviously these two belts that are coming up, they'll flow under the ground as well. So this room is going to look great soon. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, this room is looking like a joke, and that's because these train platforms are probably going to move, so I just don't want to overcommit to how everything's going to be laid out. And also, these are spaced at the exact distance that the train platforms above are. But as you can see over here, I can kind of do some workarounds in order to shift them all a little closer, and that way we get everything coming down into the proper room where it's supposed to be coming down into. Now, I'll probably extend this room out. The walkway could probably start out here, actually. It doesn't need to doesn't have to turn here for instance you know we could actually extend this out if we really want to uh, and that way it would match the height of this or the width of this room a little bit better but anyways long story short this room is temporary but that's the overall look i'm going for here so if you're in any way sort of following along or wanting to build something similar that's the idea have a room with like effectively eight belts going into it you know six of which are actually going in and two of which are coming out that's the idea anyway so crystal oscillators are now flowing out we then go up another floor, that's just an interstitial floor, and then we go up again to where we're going to be dealing now with the actual manufacturers. So we'll just fly along here, hop into our little area here, make our way upstairs, and then we can start laying out the logistics, just hook all those manufacturers up, and then it's just a matter of like queuing up the trains to deliver this stuff. So this is what we did for the income. Hey! The hell is this? Oh. Something must have been cut by accident. I didn't notice that. Oh, good thing we spotted it. I must have cut it when I was deleting things before in this room. That's funny. <laughs> that would have been one of those things where it would take me a long time to figure that one out. Um, so yeah, all good. Is it? Yeah, it's all good. Just realized something though. There's gaps on that. I don't know if there should be. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll check that later. So, the important thing, though, is here. This is where we need to hook up our inputs. Very similar to how we've just done it on the other side anyway. So just drag this out. Make the room sort of symmetrical. Alright, there we go. So we know that we need them at different heights. And we basically just need to copy what we've done over there, sort of. It only needs to stay on one floor, though, so that helps things just a little bit. Uh, so in that regard, maybe we'll just do a... I suppose we don't even need a merger, really. Although it might help with the height, I suppose, just generally. So one of them has to come up to three. The one on the way out has to go all the way up to four. So that'll be the height there. That just lets me judge the distance a bit better. We could chop this away, but just for now we'll leave it. So one, two, three. People said you, sh you never chopped the ones away over there. I kind of like them sitting there, but maybe we could get rid of them, I suppose. I usually do. So it's two, and then this will be one. So that one doesn't really even need anything there, but we'll just do this anyway. All right, something like that. And then they both all go out this way. So they just need to be divided into two, two separate lines. So it's really not that complicated. Um, basically, that just means everything needs to find its way to about here. 
and then we can split them. So we'll make a splitter coming in from, I guess, where I am. Bring it up to there and bring it up to there. And these can just connect together. No big deal. And then because it's only two rows, we only need to split it once. Just do this. And then we can just make our stackable pole. And that's it. So then we just need to make sure that our inputs get over to here. So again, very simply, I think um, I'll just drag this out, put it in the middle of the foundation. So we'll start here. This can just come along here and just line up to this one. And then now we know where our put now we know where to put the stackable poles because basically these poles tell us that. Um, and I guess they tell us that in a roundabout way here. Could do these ones instead. Bump. All right, looking good. Stackable poles, man. They really do help keep things super organized. All right, so the oscillators go in straight away because that's the only thing we actually we have made here that's delivered. We need to bring in the aluminum casing and the computers next, and then we just need to make sure that this has its way out. Um, so I'll put the way out like from. I guess it can go anyway. Actually, thinking about it, yeah. So that's fine. I can't actually see what I'm even doing now. The arrows are all messed up. There we go. Okay, cool. So, the outputs. Um, yeah, so pretty simple. I just need to do what I did before, which is start about here. That's in a line there. Then it has to go one, two, three, and four, and get going in that direction. And then if this is the line here, I need to make sure it's four out. So one, two, three, and four. So that's where it has to start, I think. That seems pretty far. Yeah, it could maybe come over by one. Let's see. Is that it? That's it. But I won't do it that way. We'll stack, stick it on the top. Two, three, and four. All right, so it's in a line with here, and then in a line with the thing. So in this line, and then on this side. All right, looking good. And then we'll just chop those away. Oh, nice. It's actually working out really nicely where it's lined up with the center of the foundation. All right, so just to make a quick cut, it's obviously gotten dark. Um, basically, the mergers are all hooked up now. We've got level one belts. I just need to feed it into the last kind of merger hole, and then we'll kind of send it over. thought I would just show that bit at least, just as it gets done. So we need to come to just about there. Go back. Go all the way up. Send it in. Let's get rid of this. That doesn't need to be there. And then we just need to, yeah, redirect this back out to get it to join its little buddy. Um, in fact, I wonder, would it just work like this? Nah, not really. So if you wanted to go into there. One, two. Bring it all the way up. And then in it goes. So that's the output. What I might do here is just to... Make it look like it's not free fall standing. Uh, actually, yeah, I could do this. That's the support for that belt. Totally fine. It actually, looks like it's going that way, but it's, it is. Yeah, it's coming this way. I guess that's the underside. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, cool. So there we go. So a little bit painstaking, but it's in place. It's basically the exact same I did for the layout of the other side. Uh, the manufacturers just need to be hooked up to power, but that is the logistics now done. So we can mark that off. It took a little bit longer than I thought, but the end result should be good. It should just be now hooking up the train to get this all done. Is that the train actually here right now? Because if it is, that's handy. Yes, it is. Um, so we could drive this train and take it along with us to the two factories we have to pick up stuff from. So I'm just going to go into this and turn off self-driving. Now, while we're in here, maybe I'll just talk to the other train. The... Turbo fuel delivery train, edit the timetable, and take this place off its timetable. So you don't have to ever come here again. This is going to be doing turbo fuel in the future. 
All right, looking good. So, yeah, let me just get upstairs. We'll just hook up the power up to this place, and then we can ride the rails down towards Circuit City. All right, so that should be power hooked up for our manufacturers now. They have their recipe, they have power, they have their oscillators. They're getting them now bit by bit. So they'll fill up full-on oscillators before the other stuff comes in. Everything else should work just fine. Um, we just need to ride the rails now down to the Circuit City and hook up some logistics there to make sure that the train is able to get its computers. The train is actually here right now, so we'll just take this. We'll tell it now to go... We'll edit the timetable right now, actually, and just follow it along, I suppose. All right, apologies. My cat was just, like, <laughs> banging on the door to get in. Uh, let her in now. So I'll just... Um, I was actually explaining the layout of the different stations. So effectively, I've just rehooked this place up. So we're up here in the north at the Crystal Oscillator Factory, the CO Factory. Down on the bottom left is Circuit City, so we have to go there first. Then we're going to go to the oil plant, then we're going to go to the aluminum plant up here, and then up to Circuit City. So it's a nice little trip. We go here, then here, then here, and then all the way up and around. And then we just have to do the loop again. So, um, yeah, so just to go, kind of go through this, at Circuit City, where we're heading to next, we're just picking up computers. So that should be fine. At the oil plant, now we're picking up the package turbo fuel and the rubber. At aluminum, we're picking up casing, and at the imports, then, we're unloading all of these things. So that's the way it's going to work. We'll save those changes. We'll turn on self-driving. It's going to take me to Circuit City, and I'll resume just as we're pulling up. Alrighty, here we are then, pulling up to Circuit City after a very arduous and long train journey, stopping at multiple junctions. But this should be us pulling in here, I think it has to go around to the far side and then loop in. Yeah, there we go. Um, now, I'm going to turn off self-driving. I don't want it to actually dock yet. We'll tell it to dock after we've set it up. No one else should be coming in here anyway. So, Circuit City Export. So, the way this is laid out is this is turbo fuel for us. This is aluminum and this is computers. So, we need the third one over to be computers. So, let's um, get downstairs and do that. Like I said, this whole factory is probably going to be torn down in the future um, and be build, build a new computer factory somewhere else. So, this is the area that we have to supply with computers. Now, if I recall correctly, somewhere over here is where our storage room is. Yeah. So, because this place is probably going to be torn down, like I said, we're going to make a kind of a quick and dirty job here. So this one's the computers, that's supercomputers and high-speed connectors. So I'm just going to feed this up kind of like... Um, hmm. Well, actually, I'll do it this way. Yeah, let me just fly up here really quickly and see where we can make a floor hole that would make more sense. So it has to come from over there. Uh, I suppose even just anywhere here is fine. So just as long as that's the target. Alright, so there's our computers. So I've got um, three manufacturers fully powered making computers, and that is 7.5 per minute, so it's the exact amount. I do have one not doing anything, which I could actually switch back to computers if I wanted to. This whole place is like falling apart, I feel like. Um... Yeah, so this was making supercomputers, and it was just being fed manually with AI limiters. And computers as well. But this could just be switched to make computers itself. And I think it would just get everything it needs. So there's extra computers coming back out now. I, As far as I remember, I could power four manufacturers, but not the fifth one. So that should be fine. The fifth one's doing high-speed connectors. Like I said, place needs to be torn down anyway, rebuilt somewhere else. It's too close to the oil facility that the rails are getting messed up, and there's nothing actually here. Everything's just delivered here anyway, so it's you can literally just move it or bring it somewhere else and figure it out later. So that's that's plan. That's the plan for this area. Rebuild the computer factory at some point. 
Uh, now that we have more base materials as well, we can actually just increase the output. We need more circuit boards anyway, so it has to be done. Uh, but it served, served me quite well for a long time. A lot of circuit boards. and That'd be really cool if you had statistics. It'd be like, how many circuit boards did this place make? And how well did it actually do in the long run? Um, yeah, it was always short on Katerian, though. That's something I do remember. Right, so this is going to be taking stuff in. So we'll just keep it up on top. Because why not? And then this is the floor hole that needs to send stuff up and out. Bring it up to the top as well. Ah, we have to, I'm out of aluminum. So we'll just use Mark 1. We only need a Mark 1 belt anyway. Alright, we could use the coveted ceiling mount thing. Basically blocking that one, but that's not going to be used anyway. So there we go. The computers are on the move, which means that they're going to flow up to here. So I'm just going to grab a bunch of computers and toss them in the train station just to get the ball rolling on some being loaded in immediately. So just take everything we can. We'll run back down to the train station now. Now that's automated and hooked up. So computers are automated and they will automatically fill that station. And it should be at the very least 7.5 per minute. I think it's actually slightly more than that, but... Should be at the very least. Alright, so up we go. Here we are at the station. It's the third one over. The train needs to load. And we'll just tell it to take all the computers. Do something like that. And then we'll just continue the journey. So we'll turn on self-driving. It should just drive up. Load those computers that are in there. And at least get the ball rolling, like I said, for starting off the radio control units. And then the next station over is the oil plant where everything's there already. So we're topping up the rubber that's at the back of the carriage right now. And then we're going to be adding on the turbo fuel that will be at the front of the carriage. And then we've got that lovely slot in the middle waiting for aluminum. Aluminum casing. I've actually turned off the recyclers at the aluminum factory. So that means the factory is probably backed up right now. Alright, looking good. So computers are loaded. And that's enough computers for a long time as well. Because we only need 1.25 per minute for six machines, so, you know, seven, eight, whatever, seven and a half. All right, we'll continue our journey over right over there. This factory has grown so much that these junctions are just far too close together, for, especially for that super long train I have, which will probably be cut in two eventually. But we have a clear path through, so there's no big deal. All right, so as we make our turn here, we'll just turn off self-driving yet again. I need to be... Oh, no, I don't need to turn off self-driving. This place is actually totally fine. Oh, good job, train. It's, it's, it braked on time. All right, so there we go. So now we're actually loading turbo fuel for the first time at the front, and we're topping up some of the rubber at the back. And we have one slot free now. For casing. Good. I got a little confused there. Yep, all good. Alright, out we go. So this is something I did since the stream. To prevent problems, I elongated the rail on the way out. And then set path signals at the end of each one here. So it can determine its path to get on to the next thing. And that makes it work. Uh, effectively, it just it was too short. The, the amount of junction space needed was just too short for the amount of trains I had on. And the fact that one of those trains could be up to 13 in size. <laughs> so that was just a problem. So to fix it temporarily, you could just make the track longer. But if I add another train onto that, it's going to break again. So it's because many of the, um, the export factory is just really in use a lot. Uh, or the export station. So, so many trains are using the export station that it's... They're all just, like, queuing up one after the other, which is just creating a massive backlog. Alright, so we should be actually taking a l I would have thought a left here. Yeah. I don't know why it stopped then. We could have just went left. Anyway. I guess it needed a path signal to do that. The junction was occupied. But both of us, technically, could use the junction at the same time. Alright, so we're going to be pulling in here to the right. And I'm going to turn off self-driving now. And I'll just manually brake. I'll 
just pull a short of the thing. All right, good. So we're out now. So it's the one, two, third carriage over. So the station entrance is there. One, two, third carriage over. This is going to be the one doing something. It's going to be doing aluminum casing, of course. And uh, instead of saying something, we could say casing. Something like that, and it's going to have at least one train on it. Good. Now, is it set to... The train is set to load. Alright, so we need to go downstairs. To make this easier on myself, I'll just drill through. Okay, so that's the one, right? I'll just double check that that's definitely the one. So it's going to be one, two, and three, and that's going to be one... Oh, no, no, no. I'm a, a silly billy. It's number two. Close one. Alright, so we'll just grab that sign, copy and paste it. And I'll just set this to nothing at the moment. Just so I know for future. Alright, still something. So this one's, this is the one. Aluminum casing. So one and two. Alright, so we'll drill down and we'll work on this floor. So what I'm going to do is, it ultimately needs to come up through here, and this does need to be aluminum, which we'll grab in a sec, but we can drag that down to about there. Yeah. So we'll cut this, cut this for a moment as well, and just bring this out with me all the way straight across. It goes straight through the foundry, which is totally fine, and it'll come out here. And that's where we have our stuff. So then we're going to need a wall to come up to this location. We're going to need the wall holes, so we need two. Yeah? Can I hop through this? <laughs> I don't think so. I'll have to walk through it. This can go. And there's our casing. So all that stuff is just backed up right now. So the casing just ultimately needs to go up there. Um, yeah, easy enough actually, right? So let's just grab some alclad because I was short on it anyway. So this will come down to about there. And this will come down to, I think it's there. Cut that away. Again, this will probably change in the future in terms of its exact layout, but it's just the logistics that are most important. Yeah, so there we go, that's all full. And we'll just send the belt across. So that's aluminum casing traveling along inside here. So we'll just head inside the smelting area. Now, does it need to go higher up? No, I'm happy with where it is. Because you could do this, but then it would be clipping. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I know I could get rid of this, but it, it does need to be another height down. I think the walkways and stuff are above over on that side. Yeah. Uh, let me just check. If I get rid of this, for instance. Is that the station platform? It is. Yeah. It's got to be at least that high, then. So that would make it a bit short. Uh, yeah, maybe actually this would look a bit better. It would keep it up a bit higher. Let's just try. So go to here instead. use the hover pack for this area. Actually, it is mostly powered everywhere. Uh, okay, so let's try this again. So we're going just from a bit of a higher area this time. Alright, sweet. So that's the height of the wall, or uh, the floor now. So yeah, or the roof, I should say. Yeah, that's good. Okay, cool. And obviously it doesn't... Our material is able to fit nicely underneath, just about. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the cool thing is now we could use the, the wall um, 
the f what are they called? <laughs> I always forget the name of this. The ceiling mounts, I suppose, I think is what they're called. All right, so just grab that, bring that all the way along here. And then ultimately we just need to give this the same situation. Yeah, so that could be changed in future to just have a one foundation. And I'm okay with that. It'll be below the station anyway. All right, let's just drag this out to, again, another ceiling mount maybe about here at the halfway point in the foundation. There's our casing traveling along nicely. Uh, okay, so then it just needs the actual wall hole. That could stay there if we want to, but we'll just get rid of the walkway in here now. Don't need it anymore. Okay. Not bad for a kind of quick job, actually. I think it's relatively in a good spot. Some of the wiring and stuff will need to be adjusted, but yeah. So now we just have this nice little conveyor um, ceiling support, bringing the two this way. And then they just need to ultimately find their way over here. Um, so yeah, so let's just grab this, we'll bring this down. One could face out this way, and the other the other way, maybe. And are they lined up, actually? So would that be lined up if I kept it straight? Uh, no. But it could stay up high. Let's just try that. So this will need to just travel along. So it actually comes down a bit if I attach it to the wall again. Could very lazily just go like, yeah, plug it in that way. I think I'll probably do that while I sort out how it could be neatly tucked away because this place needs to be worked on again. It's again these logistical floors that I always seem to leave because it's one of those things where it's just a little messy. But there we go. Either way, you know, to say we did it quickly, we're filling up the place with casing. And uh, it's relatively tucked out of sight <laughs> for now. We don't see it up there, so that's good. Down here we see nothing but cleanliness. But yeah, if we were to just really quickly walk in there, so I haven't actually even finished the walls out this way. This is the smelting floor. It's a smaller floor, and if we run around to the side, we've got things like that in other places, so it does kind of make sense in this room, so it's totally fine. We'll just need to chop away some of that raised floor and ceiling. But it looks good, right? It's just a straight two lines that goes straight from where all the stuff is produced and out. So I'm happy with that, very happy with that. And it was pretty easy and quick to do. So the only last thing would then be continuing this over. That's what we had here. And then I'll, I'll just, in between episodes, kind of get rid of some of these extra foundations and make things a bit neater. I haven't forgotten, you know, this factory and the Crystal Oscillator factory, they need to be improved and done up just slightly. And uh, these are the kind of things I want to be doing on my stream. But I need to actually have a bit of a plan of what I'm doing instead of just going, oh, let's just figure it out, and then spending like an hour on trains um, and their locations. If I know roughly the location, it can just be a matter of like kind of tidying things up then on stream, which could be fun. I don't know where to go to get back inside here, by the way. <laughs> back up to the trains. So there is a, um, yeah, there's a thing over here. Stairwell. Stairwell was actually never powered. All right, here we are. So the train was just about to pull in and get that aluminum casing next. So we'll just do that. And that should be the final journey before our radio control units get made. So we'll just turn on self-driving. Just before I do, I'll just make sure that's set to unload. Oh, hang on. It's not getting its stuff. Why is that? Oh, it's this one. I keep forgetting. But yeah, it's getting everything, so that's good. And the train is set to load. Alright, let's go. So I'll mark off on the... Oh, I actually can't access my... I'll just hop out for a second while it does its thing. Mark off on the to-do list, that is now Circuit City exports done, right? We've hooked up the exports of Circuit City and we've hooked up the aluminum here. Now it's just a case of making radio control units and taking with me 
What's needed in the top right of the screen right now to do radio control units, 100 aluminum casing, 200 alclad, and 3000 wire. I also think I need 200 heavy modular frames because I think we can do the milestone for nuclear at the same time. So there we go, the train is now full with the correct materials. Or each carriage, you know, has its thing. And now we're going to make our way back out onto the junction immediately and then take the junction around. This needs a, a split where it goes the other direction, actually, I think. That would make it much more efficient. So that way you can approach that station and leave it from two directions rather than having to go back and loop around the factory again. Alright, off we go. Back over to the Crystal Oscillator Factory. Alrighty, we have arrived. Pulling in through our sort of temporary placement for the train station. Okay, so we're going to follow the making of the first radio control units. So if I just get my hover pack and we float around here, we should see everything get unloaded and see all the belts fill up, and then we'll follow it downstairs and see what happens. See if I made any mistakes along the way. So that rubber must be full, which is why it's not emptying out. Which is interesting. I don't know why it wouldn't be consuming rubber still. Maybe I'm only pulling from this one, actually, for the factory itself. It could be the case. Alright, so there we go. We can see the computers, we can see the casing, and the rubber. So they've stopped just because it's the... I'm only using, actually, one floor hole. So we'll just fall down here. We'll go over to our lovely belts, and yep, they're getting their stuff. That's good. So if we look at the, the side that's actually done, there we go. You like that? <laughs> I do. Good. All right. Casing, computers, quartz, rubber, and crystal oscillators. Uh, so let's actually take our stairwell up and then see what's happening on the next floor over. Alright, I'm on the second logistical floor now, so we should start seeing these belts all full. Yep, so they have their casing, they have their computers, they have their oscillators. So that's everything that's needed to make these, um, I was going to say manufacturers, radio control units. And they are online. We are seeing things getting made. So it does take quite a while, because it's obviously two and a half per minute. People had said, by the way, um, you know, oh, you should check the animation of them getting made. Unfortunately, the manufacturers all have the same animation, regardless of what they're making. Um, it's cool to look at it, and it's a detailed animation, but it's a sort of generic item that they make. They sort of looks like a heavy modular frame with other components and stuff inside of it. But it is the same, regardless of what you make. You don't actually see a radio control unit get put together. Um, so we should start seeing the first ones come out. Oh, I just realized these aren't powered. Whoops. Uh, let's get them online. There we go. Should start getting their first materials now. Getting their casing. 40 per minute. That's actually going really slowly. Which, for casing, I thought it would have been a bit faster. So I can maybe just check on why that is. Um, they're using Mark 5 lifts down here. Maybe upstairs they're using Mark 1. That could be the case, actually. Which I guess is fine, because in theory they only need Mark 1 anyway. So that's Mark 1, Mark 1, Mark 1. Yeah, it's all Mark 1, that's why. Okay, well, no big deal. Ultimately it's 40 per minute, so they'll start backfilling up now anyway. So that's good. Alright, let's um, follow the belt the other way, and we should see our radio control units coming. And there we go. 
There we go. They kind of look like crystal oscillators without the the spinning disc on top. That's our first two, by the way. Two and a half per minute. Nice. Okay, so we need 50 of those in order to get to get going. Um, so I'm just going to make sure I've got everything else I need. So I needed some aluminum casing, actually, myself. Do I have 200? Uh, new. So I'll just grab some off this belt really quickly. Alright, so I'm just going to sort out my inventory. Now that radio control units are getting made and they're automated, um, I need 100 casing, 200 aluminum alclad, and 3,000 wire. So there is 3,000 wire here. So that's one, two, three, and a bit extra. Um, I think I'm going to need cables as well. If I remember the next milestone, there were several amounts of cables. I can't remember how much, but I'll just take a bunch. Uh, so the casing I've got, the alclad I've got. So that's this milestone done. Oh, I needed heavy modular frames. I think I need 200. That's going to be another factory I'll need to make. But for nuclear power milestone, I need 200. I think I've got that amount, actually. If I just check one of my boxes down here. Oh, 199. Yeah, and I've got a little bit on me. So that's going to be all the modular frames for quite a while. So I'll just take all of those. And that should be everything, I think. If I need something else, I'll obviously just have to make a run to go get it. But that should be the next two milestones quite doable. And I think some people told me you can do them at the same time. Um, so we've made 28 radio control units. So I'm just going to wait until we get 50 and then I can get out of here. Alright, there we go. I've got 56. A little bit extra. Um, okay, so I'm basically just going to get back on a train and we're going to head all the way down towards the hub, the starting area where I started the game, and see if we can get two milestones done at the same time, which I, people have told me you can if you just fill up both with their material before pressing the red button. So that's what I'm going to try and do and see if it works. Alrighty, it's been a little while since I've been down here, especially on camera, I feel like. So there's our starting area, the starting rectangle. Um, so we're just going to run over to there, basically, and start feeding it with all the materials needed for the next two milestones. And then we can just have a brief look at what we've unlocked, and then that gives me the time to, in between episodes, <laughs> check out the dangers of nuclear power. People have told me to be very, very careful with it, which is why I've kind of steered away from it. But this is, there's only four milestones in... Excuse me, in tier 8. Um, so this was two of those milestones done. Then there's the two remaining milestones. And then there's the final space elevator. So I feel like we're getting there. Although I feel like the then this last bit is probably going to be equal to the amount of time we put into the game so far. In terms of everything we need to do. So here we are then. Advanced aluminum production. Waiting for resources. So we have our 3,000 wire. We have our 50 radio control units, our casing. Now, people have told me, select a different milestone, nuclear power, selected, and load this up as well. So we'll load it up with the heavy modular frames, the wiring, is that concrete? 2000 concrete, I'll have to just go grab some, and then, ooh, 50 supercomputers. I do actually have about 30, I think, and the ability to make more relatively quickly. So I'm just going to go get them, and then we'll hit the milestone button at the same time. Well, actually, I suppose I could hit the milestone button for the first one first while I go get those. What do you think? Do both at the same time? This is ready to go. Yeah, supercomputers. Oh my god! I have them here! I swear to god, I just have them here. I don't remember ever getting them. I don't know why they're here, but I've got them. <laughs> That's awesome. I was just sitting to myself thinking like, oh, do I do the two milestones or not? Do I go back and... Because I could have gone to Circuit City and just ran the machines for a little bit just to get them. 
But yeah, didn't need to. All right, so I'll just get the final amount of concrete and we're good to go. Good thing I checked that box. Ugh. All right. Oh my god. Let's see, I'll be pretty happy if this does two milestones at the same time. All right, that's nuclear power. So just before we click the big red button, that's going to be scanner update for uranium, encased uranium cells, electromagnetic control rods, uranium fuel rods, nuclear power plant, and magnetic field generators, project part seven. Then we have the advanced aluminum production, which will give us a resource well pressurizer, an extractor, scanning water wells, crude oil wells, and nitrogen gas wells. Then we get empty fluid tanks. Oh, I've never actually seen any of this stuff. Never seen nitrogen gas. I know it's on the map, but I've never actually seen what you use it for. But anyway, heat sinks, cooling system, fused modular frames. I feel like in videos I've seen, I've seen a lot of people talking about nuclear power, but I've never seen anyone make like a cooling system factory. But all right, yeah, soon enough we'll be getting that turbo motor, Mark III miners, and so on and so forth. All right, without any further delay, let's click the big button. All right, that's advanced aluminum production. Milestone reached. The resource scanner can now find underground wells, which can be pressurized to extract resources such as nitrogen, water, and oil. Nitrogen will contribute to more advanced aluminum parts. I have the, her voice turned off at the moment. Goodbye. So is that just that one done, or did it actually do both, like that person said? No, it didn't. Oh, we can hit the button, though, again. Oh, weird. There's no one to pick it up. <laughs> Milestone reached. Uranium scanning unlocked. With the provided buildings and parts, you can now set up nuclear power generation, which balances an increase of fuel production complexity with improved power output. A new project part enables progress to the next phase. <sighs> All right, well. Note, this method of power generation creates nuclear waste. So the next two are particle enrichment and leading edge production. So to do that, we're going to need 50 fused modular frames, which is going to require straight up sending in... Ah, oh, it's the first time we'll be using a blender, perhaps. Sending in the heavy modular frames, the casings. We've got casing. We have the ability now to make nitrogen gas, although I don't know how complicated that is. But yeah, heavy modular frame. Looks like that's probably the next factory. That's going to be the next one. I know it's a big one for a lot of people. But we have the casing already, so I'm feeling good about that. And it's a good thing. Look how much it takes, 75 per minute, just to get one of these. And I've made a factory with 1,500. People said, why'd you make so many? I don't know, because <laughs> it probably you're going to need it. Um, so yeah, it's good. And we're just using at the moment, we're only actually using 240 casing in the for the radio control units. So I don't know if we need these. Well, I'm sure we'll need them for something. Let's have a look. Nuclear power. So encased uranium cells. How do we make that? So in a blender, we mix uranium, concrete, sulfuric acid, and then we get encased uranium cells. So yeah, this is obviously going to take a lot of looking into, because I've never seen this stuff before. And I know it's complicated. Um, but I'm more interested in, what about the project part? Magnetic field generator. Okay. So that's going to require versatile frames. Easy. Electromagnetic control rods. Also easy. All you need is stators and AI limiters. Totally doable. Batteries. Not so easy. Don't really like doing that. <laughs> you can mix aluminum and sulfuric acid and a casing in a blender to get a battery and some water back. Hmm, interesting. And then we have the alternate recipe. Okay. All right, what else did we just get? Just to really quickly check the end here. So we have advanced aluminum processing. The heatsink cooling system. Heatsink and a cooling system. A heatsink is an alclad and copper sheet, so that's easy. That's super easy. No problem there. Uh, okay, cooling system. Requires a heatsink, which you just saw. Rubber, no problem there either. We've got loads of it. We've got about 600, I think, free per minute to use. Uh, then it's going to require water and aluminum. Oh, nitrogen. Sorry, I said aluminum even before. It was probably nitrogen. It just looks like it. That's easier if it's not aluminum anyway. Um, okay. Yeah, these things seem like they're quite doable. 
Don't know what they're for, though, so I won't run into making them just yet. Thermal propulsion rockets, project part 8. I'm assuming that the other things are going to be needed in that. Uh, the last thing I want to check then is, okay, how do we make a resource well pressurizer? We Okay, it's just encased beams, motors, that sort of thing. And this is plastic. Yeah, this is fine. It's not too bad. I'm not scared yet. <laughs> not yet. And the blenders take control radio control units. Okay, that's good, because then now we've automated those. Excellent. All right. So with that all said and done, I think we're pretty much ready to start thinking about what's going to be next. I think it's got to be a heavy modular frame factory, because I don't automate those. I've been just making them in the distance over here, just out in the open on that manufacturer by feeding these different things. So there might actually be some even there right now. I need to also fix up the screw factory and then there's things to do with the rail network, but that's basically all that I need to do in order to just start keep progressing. I think I've, I'm set for motors, I'm set for a lot of things, although we can always get more iron and copper, obviously I'm sure we'll, we're going to need it. The base materials, increased production and stuff like that. There's also lots of part of the map that I haven't gone to yet. We were in this um, area before, but I kind of ran away when there was a big spider chasing me. Um, and then there's the rocky desert and stuff out here. The Spire Coast, really, we haven't properly looked at. So, yeah, still lots to do, lots of places to go. That's going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you have feedback, ideas, and stuff for the future, let me know. Tell me about those alternate recipes that you think I need to be getting for the last, these next few factories, right? Heavy modular frames. The cooling systems, the heating systems, anything to do with nitrogen. I won't start nuclear until I'm fully sure I'm ready for it uh, either as well. But all the information about those things are su is super valuable. So please do let me know. That's going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching the video. Consider liking it if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and if you want to support even further, consider becoming a channel member. Channel members get early access to my videos, ad-free, and also access to my Discord, where we've just set up a new Valheim and Satisfactory server for people to play on. Hopefully we can grow a community and add more games and perks in the future. Either way, I appreciate people just watching this far into the video. Thank you.